and welcome to this Unilogic tutorial. Unilogic is the complete application development environment for Unitronics Unistream control platform. My name is Alex and today's tutorial is about the FIFO and LIFO data tables. This tutorial will cover general data table requirements, an overview of how FIFO and LIFO data tables operate, ladder logic function blocks which include push, pop, front, back, clear, and top, struct tags unique to both FIFO and LIFO tables, as well as reviewing a demonstration program for each table. When using any data table, the information is not retained by default when power is cycled. If this is required, there is 256 kilobytes of memory for retained space for both data tables and tags since they share the same space. For additional memory, a micro SD card can be utilized to store table information. Data tables are also struct based. This tutorial will cover specific cases of using a FIFO and LIFO table. A more general explanation of setting up a data table with structs can be found in the index data table tutorial. The difference between an index table and a FIFO and LIFO table is how the information is written to each table. Instead of writing to a specific row index, both FIFO and LIFO systems use a push function to write information. They also use a pop function to remove information from the table. Each system writes, reads, and removes rows in a certain way. Using the FIFO system, which stands for first in, first out, the push command writes new information to the back or bottom of a data table. All of these rows are then shifted up by one as long as there is space. This is shown in the diagram on the page. When the push operation is performed, the information here has space in the back row, and the word Saturn is written to the back row of the table. The push command can only function if the table is not full. When full, you can use the pop function, which deletes the information in the front or top row. Here we can see a table with five rows that is full. When the pop operation is performed, this top row comes out of the table, and then all the rows shift upwards, leaving a row clear at the bottom. Performing a pop then a push function will cause the information that was written to the dad table first to also be the first to leave the table. Only the information in the front and back rows of the table can be read. When performing a front operation, the information in the front or top of the table will be read out. So in this instance, when the front is performed for this table, the word Venus will be read. This is also the oldest information within the table since information is written from the back and shifted up towards the front of the table. Also is the back function. When this operation is performed, information in the back or bottom row of the table will be read. Shown here is the word Saturn. This would be the newest information since it was most recently written to the bottom of the table. Next is the LIFO system. The LIFO system stands for last in first out where new information is written to the front of the data table using the push function. All of the rows then are shifted down by one. So we can see here in the LIFO system we have a table with information in the top four rows and the bottom row is empty. When the push operation is performed with the word SOL it is written to the top row of the table and all the other rows shift down. The pop function removes the front row from the table and the remaining rows shift up. Here a table is full, the pop operation is performed, the topmost row is removed from the table, and all the other rows are shifted upwards. Only the top row or front row of the LIFO table can be read from the table using the top function. Using the top function here, when this is performed within the logic, it will read only the topmost row, 
So here it reads the newest contents since it was most recently entered using a push function and it would return the word mercury. To better demonstrate these systems working, I have an example program for each one. First loaded will be a FIFO example. This first program uses a FIFO data table. To create this table, we will first need to create a struct. First navigate to structs in the global tag window. A struct has already been set up for this table, named table1 struct. We can view the tags inside by selecting the struct type. What were created were two tags for different numbers, numbers 1 and number 2, and tags for a timestamp using the real-time clock, which include the minute, hour, and second, as well as day and month of the year. After the struct was set up for the data table, we can then select the table using the same struct format. We can do this under data tables within the solution explorer on the left. We can see that this table has already been set up and we can select it to configure the properties. The properties window on the right allows the table to be configured. The name has already been assigned, but can be changed if necessary. The data table type has also been selected as FIFO. LIFO and data table index are also other options. The information will not be retained. This table has been assigned 10 rows. And importantly, the struct has been selected, which defines the column structure. This was the table one struct, shown from the struct window below. Once this is assigned, it will show a preview of the table and the area on the left. Columns can then be modified and changed as required. Also important are tags that are automatically created within the table one global struct. These can be viewed in the global tag window under the table's name. Navigating to the global tag window, you see here, we have our table one set up as a FIFO. Selecting the type, we see the different tags that were created. These tags display the number of rows within a table, the number of occupied rows, a status, and bits for when the table is either full or empty. Though not necessary, these tags could be helpful depending upon the type of application that is being developed. After the table is set up, Global structs can then be created, which will be used in the logic to write and read information. We can then view this again in the global tag window. Here there are three structs which are set up using the table one struct format. One struct for the data table information to write. And the other two, which will contain information for the read functions from both the front and back of the data table. Next we can navigate in the logic to see how this program will operate. Now that these structs are set up, it enables us to write information and read information from our data table. If you navigate in the ladder toolbox to data table FIFO, it lists all the available options, including push, pop, front, back, and clear. First, we can cover push. This is in net three. The push function will write information to the back row of the FIFO table and shift all other rows upwards. All you need to do is place the push block within the net and there are only two input blocks for this function. The first, A, this is the selection for which data table you are writing to. 
we are writing to table one. The next input is the struct source containing the information we wish to write. This will be the data to write struct. This information is constantly being generated in the first two nets and stored in the data to write struct. As we can see the first two nets here, every 100 milliseconds, we're adding a value to our first number here, our number one, data to write, as well as adding another value to our second value, number two, also in data to write. And we are constantly storing the real-time clock information in the specific tags in our data to write struct for the hour, minute, second, month, and day of the year. So when the push function is performed, it takes all that information that was contained in that struct and writes it to the table. The next function is pop. This will delete the information in the front row of a FIFO table. There's only one input for this function. This is the selection for which table will perform the pop function. This is also a selection for table one. When performed, this will delete the row information in the very top of the table. Next is clearing a table. You only need to select the clear FIFO function block and select which table to clear. In this instance, we will be clearing table one. And also in this example, attached to this function block, I also stored zero into all the front and back struct tags. This will be explained next. To read the information, we use the front FIFO and back FIFO function blocks. Unlike an index table, only a front and back row information can be read from the table using the FIFO system. Each function will read the front and back row of a table respectively. They each have only one input and one output. The input is which data table you're reading from. They are both reading from table number one. The next is the output. This is the source struct that the row information will be written to. Uh, the structs that were created shown earlier in the global tag window for front FIFO and back FIFO are the structs that are going to be written. So for the front FIFO function block, we're taking information from table one and storing it in a, the struct that we called front FIFO. And when the back FIFO operation is performed, we're taking information from table one in the back and storing it to the FIFO back struct. This information will consistently be contained within these structs unless cleared out. This is why this example above stores zero into the front and back struct tags. Otherwise, all the information within these structs would not be cleared, even when the data table itself has been cleared. Though not required, this example did this to visually show that no data was remaining in the table. Next, we can navigate to the HMI to see how it was set up. There's information for the data to log. This is the data to write that was referenced in the push function. You see this over here? This is the real time clock hours, month, data to write number one, and then data to write number two. Also, this example's HMI does use some of the tags to display the rows used. Here we see the number of occupied rows, as well as the number of total rows. Also used are the specific bits for when the table is empty and when the table is full to light up a light on the screen. The rest of the HMI displays the real time data being generated at the top, as well as the push, pop, clear buttons which trigger the functions within the logic. And to the right 
The information contained in the front and back FIFO structs are also displayed. This includes the real-time clock information that was stored at the time in the front and back FIFO system. Please note that a FIFO table cannot be fully displayed on an HMI like an index table. This is due to the way a FIFO table functions. The information from the front and back of the table can be called as necessary within the program. Next, we can connect to a Unistream that already has this project loaded with the VNC viewer to better illustrate how this FIFO example works. As we can see, starting off, there are zero rows used out of 10. The data is constantly being generated within this table. Pressing push will store this information into the first row. When I press push, we can see the used rows increments to one. This stores the information into the back of the data table. Since there is only one row currently, both the front and back of the table display the same information. And now after the first row is written, we can see the number of occupied rows start to increment if we press the push function a couple of extra times. Each time we press the push operation, information will be written to the back of the table. And each, other, each additional row will be shifted up. We can then fill this table with information After the table reaches the 10th row, the data table's full bit will go high. We see this down here. Pressing pop will then manually remove the frontmost row. So we he see here, front FIFO. Pressing pop will then remove that row. And that information will be shifted upwards. We can then press push again to fill the table. When the table is full and push is pressed, new information cannot be written. A pop function will have to be performed first. So if I try to push more information into it, see it's going to be around 40, 41, 42. Information cannot be stored in the back of the table where it's been stored previously. I would have to perform a pop operation first. That will clear out the frontmost row. There's only nine used rows out of 10. So now when I press it, around 17, 20, 0 we now see that that information was written to the back of the table. We can then clear the table. As we saw in the logic, this clears the table as well as clearing the tags within the front and back FIFO structs. This is the end of the FIFO example program. Next, I will load the LIFO program, which works similarly. Like the first example, this program writes information to a data table, with this example using HMI keypad entry to generate the data. The LIFO example has a struct that was created for the data table. We can see this under the structs tag window with the name LIFO table. We can then click on the struct type to see the individual tags that were created. There is a bit, an integer, and a real tag that have been created for this example. This struct can then be assigned to a data table. We can see this by navigating to the data tables in the Solution Explorer. We can see this table is already being created with the name LIFO test. The columns of this table are already set up according to the struct. We can use the properties window on the right to edit this table. It has been assigned a name of LIFO test. The data table type is selected as LIFO. The table has been selected as retained. It has been assigned 10 rows. And importantly, it has been assigned the struct LIFO table, shown in the structs tag window. When created, this table is also assigned a global struct. This is shown in the global tags window.
We can see it under the table's name, LIFO test, and we can select the table's type to view the different operands. Here we can see this includes the number of rows, the number of occupied rows, a status, and a bit for when the table is either full or empty. The difference between this table and the FIFO table is that information will always be written to the front row of the LIFO table and all the other rows are shifted down. This is a stack system where once all 10 rows are written, no more information can be entered. Information will have to be removed starting with the most recent entry. We can see how this is set up within the ladder logic. Within the logic, we can see the different commands that the, FIFO, the LIFO system uses in the toolbox under data table LIFO. The LIFO function blocks are more limited than the FIFO with only a push, pop, top, and clear function able to be utilized. We can go over these functions now and how they work. First off, in number two here, is the push function block. This writes information to the front row of the data table. Each time this is performed, the rows shift down, and once the table is full, no more information can be written. There are two different inputs for this function. A, this is the data table that the information is being sent to. We will be writing information to the LIFO test table. And B, this is the struct source that contains the tag information we wish to write. This will be shown later in the HMI where we can enter the information. Next in net three is the pop function. This deletes the frontmost row in the data table. All of the rows are then shifted upwards and there's only one input for this function. That is which data table will have this pop function performed. This again will be the LIFO test data table. Next is the top function. This is the only way to read information from the specific data table. This reads the information from the front row of the table only. There is both an input and an output for this function. The input A this is the data table that the top row is being read from. We're going to be reading from the LIFO test table. And we're going to output it to B. This is the struct source that the information will be written to. We've created a struct called top LIFO using the exact same struct we saw in the struct tag window. LIFO table, which contain the same three different tags. There's also a clear function up here located in net number one. Just like the FIFO system, this erases the entire data table. And again, the only thing this function requires is an input, is the desired table to be cleared. In this instance, we'd be clearing the LIFO test table. Next, we can navigate to the HMI to see how this example program was set up. This example's HMI does use the table's global tags on the right to display the rows used, the number of occupied rows, a status message, and bits to trigger a light for when the table is either full or empty. There's also a section on the top left, values to enter, link to the struct LIFO input for the push function, which we saw on the ladder. There are also buttons linked to bits to operate both the push pop as well as clear functions. And the bottom there's also a section displaying information from the top struct. Please note that a LIFO table also cannot be fully displayed in the HMI like an index table. This is due to the way a LIFO table functions. The information from the table can be recalled only using the top function. I can now connect to a Unistream with a VNC viewer with this example to better demonstrate how this LIFO system functions. 
as we can see the example here. Starting off, there are zero rows used out of 10. Nothing is in the top LIFO. So we can enter a couple different values to start. We can turn this bit on. We can assign a value here for our first. This can be one. And the same for our second. This is a real. We can enter 1.1. We can now press push and store it to the top of the table. We can see now that the LIFO empty bit has turned off. The number of occupied rows has incremented to one. In the top of the LIFO, which is constantly running, it showed the information we just displayed. We can then do this for a couple more rows, changing the values as we uh, perform the push function. This next row, we can change this value to two, perform the push operation again. We can now see that the number of occupied rows is incremented to two, and the top of the LIFO is now displaying the most recent information that we just entered. We can do this for the remainder of the rows. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and finally 10. Now upon reaching the 10th row, the data table's bit full will go high. We see now that the number of occupied rows is now 10 out of our possible 10 rows that were available. The LIFO full bit has now gone high. Now, if I change this value again, to 11 if we try to enter an 11th row. We can see it can no longer enter information, otherwise the top of the LIFO would have changed. Pressing push when the data table is full will not have any effect. This front row will need to be cleared out first. We can do this by performing the pop function. So if I press pop, it will remove that 10th row we had entered there. And then we see at this point, the top of the LIFO is displaying the 9th row that we entered previously. That would then allow us to write this other information we wanted to, which would then fill the table up again. We can also do this multiple times to clear the table out. Or we can press clear, which we can then see the number of occupied rows is zero, and the number of rows is still remaining at 10. This is the end of the LIFO example program. I hope you found this information helpful. This concludes the tutorial about both the FIFO and the LIFO data tables. You can find more information and example applications on our website. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope to see you again.